وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول إن شاء الله تعالى ما beloved brothers and sisters I'm now إن شاء الله تعالى gonna go into another chapter that I promised which is the second last chapter مسائلٌ في التوبة important issues related to توبة that we must know and inshallah ta'ala there are going to be 10 points that I inshallah want us all to have an understanding of the very important points and very relevant to each and every one of us the first thing is tawbah according to the scholars is two types there is a tawbatun which is tawbatul wajibah and tawbatul mustahabba the obligatory repentance and the uh, recommended repentance. The uh, obligatory repentance is the one that has to come from uh, when a person does a haram or leaves off a wajib. You've either done something which is haram or you left off what was obligatory on you, wajib, then you have to come with repentance. This is a tawbah which is wajiba. It's an obligatory repentance. Min fi'lil muharramat wa tarkil wajibat. A person is doing haram or a person is leaving off obligatory things. This person's the repentance is obligatory on them. The second type is not obligatory, it's recommended. And that is if a person is doing makuhat, that which is disliked. وَتَرْكِ الْمُسْتَحَبَّاتِ And they are abandoning the recommended acts of obedience. They're not doing it. This repentance is recommended to repent from these things. If you keep doing some things which are makru, it's good to repent from it. Uh, if you are leaving off things which are mustahab, recommended things, um, it's also recommended to repent from that act. If a person Repent from the first only. And he, he only comes with a tawbah tul wajibah. He only comes with the obligatory tawbah. Then he's from the al abrarul muqtasideen. He's going to be from the slaves of Allah who have uh, come with what was required from them. And he has come with the basic. The basic has come with. And if a person repents from both, and he repents from, he comes with the tawbah to wajibah consistently. And he also comes with um, a tawbah, uh, al-mustahabba, the recommended tawbah. Then this individual has placed himself or herself in a high position in Islam. And this person in Jannah and Yawmul Qiyamah, their position is very high. If they come with repentance for both. So we need to be working for repenting from both or coming with a tawbah to wajiba and also a tawbah to mustahabba if you abandon both يعني, you don't come with tawbah to wajiba ولا tawbah to mustahabba you are either a fasiq or you're a kafir you're either a fasiq or a kafir the second point that inshallah ta'ala I want to bring to your attention and I think it's very important that we understand it is we hear about a tawbah to nasuha, the tawbah which is nasuh. What does that mean? The Quran mentions it. Ya ladina amanu tawbu ila Allah tawbah to nasuha. What does it mean? A tawbah to nasuha means a repentance which is al khalisah, al sadiqa, al nasiha, al khaliya min al shawaib wal ilan. It is the repentance which is done with sincerity. It is a sincerity, it's a repentance which is sincere, truthful. It is stripped from any hidden agendas and defects that a person has. It's done with khashyatullahi. You are fearful of Allah and His punishment and His wrath. You are hoping for Allah's jannah, jannah and His mercy. You are doing it privately and you're doing it publicly. 
You regret the mistake that you did. You have conviction in your heart that you're not going to do it again. You distance yourself from that sin. This is called a tawbah, the repentance which is an nasuh The third point that inshallah ta'ala want to speak about is if a person repents from some sins but is also committing sins in other things. So a person repents from some sins but he's doing other sins which the scholars call a tawbatul khasa min ba'di al-dhunub repenting from some things. For example, a person, he uh, drinks khamar and he also commits zina. He repents from drinking khamar but he didn't repent from zina. Does that mean his repentance for neither of them are accepted? Or is it accepted because he uh, repented from uh, khamar? Or do we say, in order for your repentance for khamar to be accepted, you have to leave the zina as well. Both of them, both of them you have to repent from and you have to leave both. That's and only then it's going to be accepted. The strongest opinion is no. The repentance for the khamar that the person repented from is accepted even though he's committing zina which also requires a repentance from them wasirrul mas'ala and the secret in this issue is an tawbah tatabaab that the tawbah can be broken down kal ma'siyah like the sins if a person is committing zina and if a person is stealing each and every one of them have a hukum khas the one who commits uh, steals, his hand is chopped off. And the one who's committing zina, he gets lashed. And he, both sins are independent from one another. So the way that the sins are separate, the repentance is also the same. And in each one you can repent for. But what you can't do is, if a person repents from uh, committing zina with Zainab, but he says, I'm going to commit zina with Aisha, for example. La, both of those are not accepted because the sin itself still stands. Does that make sense? So, وَسِرُّ الْمَسْأَلَةِ أَنَّ التَّوْبَةَ تَتَبَعَبْ كَالْمَعْصِيَةِ فَيَكُونُ تَائِبًا مِنْ وَجْهٍ دُونَ وَجْهٍ That's the mas'ala. So if you're doing a particular, a person says, oh, I, 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 I repent from this riba I did here. But he's doing another type of riba somewhere else. That repentance is not accepted because he's doing the same jinns, the same thing. But if you repent from riba, but he's stealing, there are two different sins. That's the third point I wanted to, inshallah ta'ala, discuss and cover. The fourth point is, التخلص من الحقوق والتحلل من المظالم. The repentance, it connects to two. حق الله and حق العباد. The rights of Allah and the rights of the slaves. If it's the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are three things that you must come with. If it's the right of Allah, there are three things that you need to come with. Al-iqla' Al-iqla' an al You free yourself from the sin, you walk away from the sin, and you stay away from anything that is bringing you back and sucking you into that sin. You free yourself from the sin. You walk away from it. That's one. Uh, and nadam, regret, when you think about that sin, you, it hurts you, you feel bad. Why did I do that? Why did I commit that? Nadam. The third one is, al-azmu, al ya'uda You make a decision that you're never going to go back to it. Those three are haqqullahi, the rights of Allah. When it's Allah's rights. When it's the rights of a creation, okay, you have to do those three. Because remember, when you oppress a person or you wrong a person, you're also going against the commands of Allah. So the repentance to Allah is always connected even to when it's the creation. So you have to come with the three for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's an additional one which is التحلل من المضاني The rights of that person which you've stripped from them, you need to return it. And I've divided for you the rights of the people in the following accounts. The first one is al-huquq al-maliyah. It's wealth-related rights that you've taken from someone. Someone's wealth, you've taken it from them. That person whose wealth you've taken, you must 
bring it back to them. Say, here's your wealth. What about um, you don't know the person now? It's someone you don't know, you don't remember it, you don't remember the amount, you don't know who the person is, for example. What do you do in a situation like that? In a situation like that, what you do is you give sadaqah on behalf of those people. That money that you have, you don't know who the person is, but you have the money, you take that money and you give it in sadaqah. Yawmul Qiyamah. The person will be given two choices. The owner of the wealth, the person whose wealth you stole. They will be given two choices. The first choice is that they get your reward. How do they get the reward for? Uh, they take reward from you or they get the reward of the sadaqah. If they take the reward for the sadaqah, that's what you, you did it for them. If not, they take some of your hasanat. If they take your hasanat, that sadaqah becomes your wealth. Okay, so that you gave becomes your, your wealth and so you get the reward for it. Second one is Al-Hukuq Fil Abdan. When it comes to the people's rights, Hukuq Fil Abdan, persons, you physically cause a person a harm, for example. You transgressed on a person physically. If it's a wound, you wounded someone, then you must go forward to that person and say, here I am. What do you, you want wealth, you want money, you want qisas, you want me to be... Uh, what do you want? Um, if it reaches qatl, killing the person. If it was killing, then the killing is broken into two. Deliberately, or if it was accident. If it was deliberately, the scholars are of two views. Whether you even have repentance. There are two views. There's the view of some of the scholars who hold the opinion that the person who kills a person deliberately, la tawba talahu, there's no tawba for that person. Killing someone deliberately, there's no toba. There are some scholars who hold that opinion, even from the Salaf. Um, the second view is, which is Qawlul Jumhur, the view of the overwhelming majority of scholars, they hold the opinion that that person does have repentance. It's like any other sin, there are repentance for it. And, but the rights are three. Okay, Haqqullah is always there. The rights of Allah, and I told you how to repent from that. There's the Haqq of two. Who is it? Haqqul Qatil and Haqqul Waratha. The Haqq of the Qatil, the one that was killed, uh, he's got rights. And the Haqq of the Waratha. The Waratha are the people who are inheriting this individual. They have rights. The Waratha, they're the ones who determine wealth or for you to be killed for that person. They can even say, give us money. Or they can say, we want you to be killed. We want you to be killed for killing our brother. Now you're left with the third rights, which is the person on the other side. Scholars have mentioned that from the textual evidences that they looked at, they took from it that if you get killed, if you come forward and you say, here I am, either kill me or I'll give you money. And they say to you, you know what? We want you dead. Yawmul Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place in the killer's heart to forgive you for what you've done and Allah will repay that person with great reward. And so inshallah ta'ala, that's how your repentance will be accepted from the person that was killed. What about if you didn't do it by, if you didn't do it deliberately, it was an accident, then if it's an accident, you have to give blood money and you bring yourself forward. The third type is al huquq fil arab You slandered a person, you criticized the person, you spoke about a person's honor you must come forward and ask for forgiveness and say to that person, I'm sorry, I spoke about you in a bad way. If you believe that you coming forward to that person and telling them, my beloved brother and sister, I said this about you, I spoke about you in this way, if you think it's going to cause a great fitna, then what you can do is you speak to that person in a general manner. So you say, can you forgive me for anything I've ever said or done to you? Make it general. Um, if you still think that that will also cause a great problem, then what you can do is you speak good of that person everywhere you go. And you praise them as you spoke bad about them. Because Islam really pushes towards the issue of unity and 
being together. And so it doesn't want you to speak to him and then it causes harm. So Islam calls to the concept of unity uh, and being together. So it wouldn't want you to go to that person and tell them what you've done to them and then it causes discord and disunity and fight and, uh, between the, the believers. Inshallah ta'ala, the uh, fifth point that I want to speak about is Tawbatul Ajiza Anil Ma'asiyah. There's a person who um, is unable to do a sin and he can't commit a sin that he used to do. He can't commit it anymore. Will repentance be accepted from them? Like he used to do this sin for so long, now he's unable to do it. Is repentance accepted from him? The reason is because, the reason why this question will come up is, or it came up is because this person, even if they wanted to do the sin, they can't. For example, they're in a life sentence, prison. They've been in prison for life. They can't even come out commit, to commit zina if they wanted to, for instance. Or they can't come out to rob, or etc. Or for example, an illness came to them where they, they, they can't commit zina. This individual, will we say, no one needs your repentance because you can't even do the sin if you wanted it, if you wanted to. No, we don't. We'll say the repentance is also accepted from you and you should come with repentance for everything that you've done in the past and even the thoughts that come to your mind as well. Point number six, نَقْضُ tawbah. A person destroys he or she's repentance. Like he keeps falling into the sin again. We spoke about that before. You have to consistently and continuously make sure that you repent. Always just keep repenting. When you do the sin, repent again. When you do the sin, repent again. Repenting again means what? The three points I mentioned. Okay? The three points I mentioned, which is um, uh, and nadam, regret it. Aliqla, stay away from the sin and also make a decision that you never fall into it. The Seventh point, inshallah ta'ala, I want to mention is Ruju'ul hasanat ila ta'ib uh, ila ta'ib A person repents. They've actually repented and they've become uh, a righteous person now. All of the good that I did in the past, will they come for me now? And I used to do good things back in the days. I repented from some of my sins. Will the repentance bring those good for me? This hadith, I mean, this question has an answer from it according to the hadith of Hakim ibn Hizam. Hakim ibn Hizam, and he came to the Prophet, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I am a man who used to worship Allah in Jahiliyyah, before Islam. Before Islam, I used to worship Allah. I used to do things like sadaqah, to give wealth for the sake of Allah. I also used to free slaves. I used to come with silatul arham, I used to keep the ties of kinship. Now I've become a Muslim. When I get all those good I used to do, the Prophet said to him, Aslam ta'ala ma aslafta min khayr. The good that you did has now come to you through Islam. All the good that you've done before Islam, repentance and coming to Islam has brought it for you. And all of those good he did, he gets it once he took Islam. So for example, if a person was not a Muslim, he comes into Islam, all of his good will come with him. Because Islam is a repentance from kufr and disbelief. Number eight. Halit tawbah. Turja'ul abda ila halihi qabla ma'asiyah. A person used to have a high station, was a noble person in Allah's eyes. He had a great position. And he was an obedient slave of Allah. He had a big position. But he committed a very evil sin and he fell down. And he went down. Now he repented, will he go back to his level again? Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, it depends. Rahimahullah. Ibn Taymiyyah said in Majmu'ul Fatawa, he said it depends. It depends on how the person becomes after repentance. If he's re after his repentance, if he's better than how he was before he committed the sin, then of course his level has now gone up. If it's the same, then of course, he's going to be the same. And if it's lower, and he's become worse after repentance, he's become lower, then he's going to go low in station. Okay? Point number 
فعل المعصية من المعاصي لا يسوغ فعل غيرها Some people, subhanallah, they commit sin. And when they commit a sin, they justify another sin because of this sin. For example, they will say, hey, I, uh, I uh, for instance, I stole this pizza, so even if it's pork inside it, no problem. Arafton, two sins you've taken. You stole the pizza, for example, that you're eating, and the second thing is you're eating pork, or you're eating something which is haram. One sin doesn't justify the other sin. One wrong doesn't justify the other one. You're meant to stay away from both of them independently. And many people fall into this issue. Many people fall into this issue. For example, if a person says to them, Akhi, stop this. It's not good. The other person says to them, But were we, were we not doing this yesterday? Yeah, but we're meant to repent from that one and ask Allah for forgiveness for that one. We shouldn't be saying we did that yesterday so that we can do all the, other, all the other sins. Does that make sense, brothers? It's very important. Many people fall into it. One sin does not justify another sin. We have to understand that each sin requires repentance and we need to repent to Allah from it. The tenth and final point is فعل المعاصي لا يسوغ الاستهانة بالطاعات اليسيرة just because you're committing a sin and you're dwelling into sins, my beloved brothers and sisters, don't ever belittle a righteous deed, even if it's small. Some people, they say, why, you know, why am I going to do this righteous action? It's little in comparison to my sins. I'm a criminal. I'm a wrongdoer. I'm a transgressive person. This little righteous deed, it's not going to help me. And they forget the story that Imam al-Bukhari narrated in Sahih of the woman who was a prostitute and she sees a dog, a thirsty dog. She takes off her shoes, she, fe she feeds the, uh, the, the, the dog the water, and she leaves. And because of that, she enters Jannah. She's a baghi min baghaya bani Israel. She's, a, she's a, a prostitute. It's a big sin, right? Here she's doing a small righteous deed. But that small righteous deed, look where he took her. Never belittle a righteous deed. And say to you, this is a little deed, you know, what, what is it going to help me for? Anything I might have said that was wrong or incorrect is for me and Shaytan and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik, ashadu wa la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amau at home.com.